Several bloggers are expected to appear tomorrow morning at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations to answer to charges of various alleged crimes, among them misusing licensed telecommunications gadget to issue false information. The bloggers, about eight in number, however, insisting that their summonses are a strategic move by the government to intimidate the law to say they are being targeted for being critical about the Jubilee administration. Timothy Otiano has details. <laughs> It was a dramatic culmination of what has been a tough two weeks for bloggers in Kenya. Blogger Anthony Jorogemburu, alias Waimemburu, was released by the Mombasa court after his arrest last week. He was accused of posting on Facebook derogatory statements against Kiambu governor William Kabogo, whom he alleged was operating a substandard poultry business in Kwale County. There was drama at the court during Joroge's appearance. Joroge's supporters were led by Kabogo's fierce rival Ferdinand Waititu. The arrest and subsequent release of journalist turned blogger Yasin Juma appearing to be the straw that broke the camel's back, releasing an avalanche of police summons on nine other bloggers accused of going against the content of the Information and Communication Act. The nine among them, Cyprian Nyakundi, Patrick Msafari, Seth Odongo, Charles Ndienya, Anthony Mburu, Eddie Ila, Felix G. Cord, George Nyongesa, and Robert Alai are accused of contravening the Information and Communications Act. But Robert Alai, one of the summoned bloggers, is raising concern over what he terms as government's unrelenting quest in ensuring bloggers who appear to critique it are silenced completely. Even the arrest of uh, Yasin Juma, I, I was uh, checking the timeline of uh, Yasin Juma. I, you know, I've, I've been looking for the wrong things he did. It is, it, is, it is so wrong that the government can try to target a journalist just because of doing what he's trained to do. It's like, <laughs> it's like jailing a doctor because he treated a malaria patient. This is what the journalists are tra trained to do. They're trained to inform the people. These are professional journalists. He was not posting any bad picture. So why do you arrest him? Why do you take yourself through all this stress of being portrayed badly? Then you say that the media report the government negatively. It is not the media, it's the government reporting itself negatively. Section 29 of the Information and Communication Act stipulates that a person who by means of a licensed telecommunication system sends a message that he knows to be false for the purposes of causing annoyance, inconvenience or needless anxiety to another person commits an offense and shall be liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 50,000 shillings or a jail term not exceeding three months or both. The government is trying to misuse an act which is itself illegal. You know, the, 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 the Communication Act, the Section 29B of the Kenya Communication Act, CAP 411, it's very wrong to, 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 to indicate that, you know, you can be taken to a police station for causing personal annoyance using a license. You know, Twitter is not even a license to communication equipment. The blogger's statement seemingly being echoed by opposition legislators who are accusing government of witch hunt. Jubilee has employed every trick in the books to curtail civil liberties including media freedom, as a way of entrenching its rule over the people. We cannot accept that kind of, of reversal. It's totally accept, unacceptable to keep somebody while you are still fishing around or trying to get charges or trying to make charges that are proper. But the Inspector General of Police remains adamant that the bloggers indeed have broken the law and he wants them to answer to their crimes without shifting blame. They broke the law and they know it. There is legitim legitimate reportage, there is legitimate uh, exercise of freedom of whatever you want to do, but there are limits. You don't cross certain lines. You, you break the law, obviously, you, know, you become guests of these officers next to me. So when you are invited, don't blame the officers, you blame yourself. The bloggers will be heading to the Directorate of Criminal Investigations under the stewardship of lawyer James Sorengo on Wednesday. Timothy Otieno, KTN News.